to Talking Fitchburg. It is May 13th, 2020. Over at a wonderful Wednesday. Glad you're here and uh, tuning into TF. I'm Jeremy Crosby, Andrew Bamlett at the board, uh, and we're both uh, both uh, at home. He's in uh, he's in a faraway land that that cannot be disclosed unless you watch previous episodes, then you would know. Uh, and uh, of course, I'm in uh, who knows where. I'm just in Jeremy's castle, or as my wife likes to say, it's her castle. And she's over there, so I can say that lovingly. Right, honey? Honey? No, nada. Nothing. She's got her headphones in. Whatever, she can ignore me. And uh, yeah, we're, uh, we've are we got a busy show for you uh, coming up today. And uh, hopefully we'll get uh, Andrew back on board here. We're working uh, to bring Andrew back to the show, darn it. And we're going to get him here uh, soon. Uh, and I just say that because I miss him. We miss not talking to anybody on the show. It's different. But I have talked to a lot of people today, let me tell you. And it's a full construction uh, update today. Steve Tyson for Wisconsin DOT is here. He'll give us an update on the Rona Road Project, uh, telling you about closures, road uh, uh, ch- crossovers, the whole the whole nine yards. He's here. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. And then Bill Balk is here as well. Fitchburg. Uh, that's a Fitchburg Road Construction uh, update for you. Uh, we've got some, uh, some updates. Uh, and uh, Bill's got a new headset. Wait till you see his headset. It's awesome puts us to uh, shame again we've been shamed a lot on the show <laughs> since we moved to this we had our radio mics before and then you know, you know went to this but i digress let's get right into the headlines we start with your weather weather moving into night yeah there's two rounds of showers and thunderstorms forecasted uh, for tonight into thursday evening first round will be later tonight uh evening into early thursday morning so overnight stuff Cloud to ground lightning will be the main uh, impact from this first round of showers and uh, storms. Second round will be on Thursday, late afternoon and evening. It sounds like your drive at home. This one will be uh, closer to the Illinois border uh, and hail uh, to a half of inch in diameter with gusty winds, uh, 40 miles an hour possible. Also, crowd, uh, cloud to ground lightning uh, could occur with some of these storms. So there's some uncertainty about the uh, second round, according to the Weather Service. And uh, it may stay uh, and go further south. So we'll see. That's all we can say, right? How about rain? Let's talk about the rain. And it looks like it's going to rain, well, could get up to an inch in uh, some areas. So uh, it's been a while since it's rained. So, hey, we'll take it. Uh, not too much of it, but we'll we'll take it. All right, other news. Uh, it is Police Week, and uh, we've been highlighting uh, different stories this week uh, with Police Week. And I want to remind you about this one that happening uh, tonight, uh, and it's a candlelight visual. Uh, I always say that wrong. Uh, vigil. It's happening at 8 uh, p.m., uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Central here. Uh, you can go on to the website. Uh, it'll be uh, broadcasted uh, online, uh, and uh, you'll be able to watch uh, from anywhere in the world as the names of the 307 brave men and women are read aloud in respect and honor and remembrance uh, for them uh, on the ultimate sacrifice uh, they made uh, uh, being an officer. So you can tune in uh, for that uh, tonight and seven uh, central here, 8 PM Eastern. And the link is right there on the screen for you. And of course we share the link stuff when we post up our headlines, so you can uh, check that out as well. All right, got a job fair to tell you about. And you're like, wait, Jeremy, you can't get together for job fairs. Don't worry, we got you covered on this one. It's a virtual job fair with SSM Health. Yeah, join the healthcare uh, heroes with a uh, rewarding career. Speak directly with the SSM recruiters for many different opportunities. This will be happening on May 20th at 1 p.m. May 20th at 1 p.m. You do have to register for this. We've got the link. We'll share that with you. And this is uh, all part of a cool initiative uh, by Urban League uh, of uh, Greater Madison uh, and I believe Dane County uh, partnering up uh, to continue to provide work uh, uh, for people out there. Well, here, if I just read my script, part of the Urban League of Greater Madison and the COVID Workforce Workforce Relief and Recovery Initiative. Andrew's telling me, read the script, dude. Come on. Uh, Either way, make sure you do get signed up for that, though, okay? you got to get yourself uh, signed up uh, for uh, that uh, uh, great event. All right, supporting the class of 2020. This is coming from uh, our, uh, uh, I almost said our affiliate, the chamber. 
<laughs> it's the Fitchburg Chamber. Yeah. Uh, do, it says here, due to the COVID-19, our local high school graduates were not able to participate in many of the special events that they traditionally have planned in the past, such as prom, senior class trips, and of course, graduation celebrations. Fitchburg serves three fantastic school districts. Madison Metropolitan School District, Oregon School District, and Verona Area School District. All these graduating seniors are our neighbors, customers, and future employees or business owners. Let's help our seniors feel as special as they deserve. Consider displaying a large sign, whether it's digital or not, uh, displaying a message to recognize the graduating class of 2020. This could be as short as a simple and simple as congratulations, class of 2020. Or grads, we're so proud of you. It could be anything, right? You can also uh, give them a shout out on social media as well. I've seen so many different fun ways of people sharing this stuff, but uh, glad the chamber shared this out uh, to their members and uh, I'm sharing it with you because this is a great opportunity uh, to uh, tell them, hey, thank you. And well, thank you, but congratulations as well for graduating uh, as again, uh, COVID-19 kind of uh, changing up uh, things uh, this year, unfortunately. All right, finally, uh, some uh, also fun news here. Did you hear it last night? If you didn't, you missed out. Those planes uh, flying over last night, uh, the 115th uh, fighter wing uh, out of uh, Madison here, uh, participating of the Wings Over Wisconsin event. And uh, yeah, I, it was fun to watch uh, last night, watch all the different videos. Uh, be uh, played from uh, all the different news organizations across the state. Uh, four jets here uh, making their way through. And this is a cool shot. This is from uh, the KC-135S from the 128th Air Refueling Wing of Wisconsin in the skies. Uh, looks like refueling the planes and uh, giving you some shots from above. I was trying to capture it on my own uh, cell phone last night when they took off. I live uh, close to the airport, so... We get to see them and <laughs> all you could do is hear them they were uh they were cruising off but uh it was a really great sight to see and that was uh to thank all of the uh or salute healthcare workers first responders and other frontline workers uh out there so lots of videos uh that you can check out and i encourage you to go over to the uh facebook page of the 105th uh, fighter wing uh because or 115th fighter wing check out the videos because they had a video they posted before they left so you got to meet some of the pilots showing you taking off and then uh, coming back in uh and uh, showing some of the uh, aerial why they were uh flying over the different places so very neat and uh yeah hopefully you got to see them all right that does it for me in the headlines coming up next we open up the digest we start with your verona road construction update and you're like wait it's not monday no we've got steve tyson he'll join me next talk about the project where we're at and where we're going that's right here on talking pitcher We're going to the playoffs. I can't believe I missed that. Every time I'm buzzed, I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Kevin! Gaining weight was easy. All I had to do was sit down and eat. Losing weight's a lot harder. I have to work at it every day. But with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes every step, every choice, every day. Very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes by losing weight, eating healthy, and staying active. Visit CheckupAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. <laughs> yeah! Sam, Elmo! Oh, hey, Julia! Are you ready to play band with us? I'm gonna play my clarinet. And Elmo's gonna play his drum! Drum loud! Oh, well, you know what to do, Julia. Uh, Julia knows! Mm-hmm. 
With Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. <laughs> Play band. <sighs> Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me today is my friend, my pal, Steve Tyson, Wisconsin DOT. Steve, how you doing? Good. Good morning, Jeremy. How are you? Living the dream, my friend. Living the dream from, uh, from must my be a good dream here. then. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's okay. It's okay. Um, Steve, uh, how have you been doing out there uh, and uh, road construction land? Doing well, thank you. It's certainly been busy. We had a couple of rainy days here in April. Now we're uh, in the second week of of May and. Things are progressing nicely. We're actually looking toward a, an upcoming traffic shift after Memorial Day weekend to take traffic onto the new concrete pavements, not there yet, but onto the new pavement on the eastbound side, and we'll start working on the westbound lane. Yeah, the things have been moving uh, pretty slick uh, so far. Has COVID-19 uh, helped move this project along, or are we just right on track with, uh, with everything uh, in, the, in this uh, construction phase this year? Uh, we're right on track with everything going on. Certainly the lower traffic volumes allow us to have uh, more lane closures, especially during the daytime hours. Uh, in the contract we previously had between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m., so during the non-peak uh, times of the day. But with the lower traffic volumes, we're able to extend that continuously. Since then, we have now had two lanes open each way between Fitzroner Road and Commerce Park Drive. Um, of course, there's still the construction processes to to follow, waiting for the grade to settle, waiting for uh, asphalt pavement or concrete pavement to cure, uh, what have you. So there's still some of the normal construction things to, to wait for, but certainly moving moving and progressing nicely. Yeah, and uh, talking about uh, the, the McKee Road component here and uh, what's happening uh, uh, this year. So this is the final phase, uh, as we've uh, shared on our, our updates. Uh, but uh, Steve, uh, kind of walk us through here uh, the next couple of months here. So obviously, we're you're just about done uh, with uh, eastbound, right? So the eastbound side, we're we're grading that right now. We're actually going to have a, a closure of Nesbit Road next week, uh, May 18th, May 19th for two days, and then we will uh, pave the concrete and the asphalt through uh, that area, and then shift eastbound traffic onto those new eastbound lanes, so essentially the south side of, of McKee, and then work uh, a little bit in the media and then shift all the traffic onto that south side as we work on the westbound lane. So by the end of the project, late November, or excuse me, late October, early November, we'll have three lanes each way on McKee Road, as well as the single point interchange at Verona Road and PD. I know you talked about that in your update a couple of weeks ago. That's the very similar configuration to the Beltline and Verona Road interchange that will be in effect here uh, later this year. Yeah, very excited uh, to uh, see that uh, finish up. Uh, there has been some road uh, construction to uh, some finishing uh, pieces uh, on the Verona Road itself. Uh, tell me what's uh, been going on up there. Yeah, so we had um, some concrete patching in the old lanes of um, Highway 8151, essentially right near the Fitzrona Road bridges. Um, and that was in the old lanes that we did some concrete patching just to rehabilitate that and, and make that last a little longer. Uh, we finished the northbound epoxy polymer overlay uh, a couple weeks ago. So now that has that same overlay like the southbound structure. And then we're also putting down the permanent pavement markings between uh, County PD and Raymond Road. And we'll have um, some lane closures going on, of course, this week, as well as next week, and some ramp closures at PD and Williamsburg Way, just to make those final connections and to have that, that finished product. Yeah, and since, uh, since we've gone live uh, with Verona Road, boy, does traffic move through there fairly slick. It does. It's moving along really well. Certainly a much needed improvement compared to the, the two intersections that we had even five years ago, what it is today. A lot more efficient, a lot safer. Certainly we encourage everyone to obey the posted speed limit out there just because it's three lanes and, and, and free flow travel doesn't mean you get to do 80 going down uh, Verona <laughs> Road. It's still, still the seg uh, segments of 30, 40, and 55, and then as you get out closer to Verona, it becomes uh, it bumps back up to 65. But certainly, people need to keep their heads up, phones down, and obeying that that posted speed limit through there. 
Uh, let's go back and uh, quickly talk about that road closure uh, at Nesbitt. Um, are, will we have a, a detour uh, for that set up, Steve, on those couple of days, or uh, how are we going to handle that? So for Nesbitt Road, we're closing it Monday, May 18th, and Tuesday, May 19th. And that two-day closure will allow crews to do some grading, aggregate, some storm sewer work, and then asphalt paving to make that final connection to the uh, finished McKee Road intersection there. Um, there won't be any detour since it is a local roadway. Uh, however, people familiar with the area can use uh, the Fitzrona Road intersection, so up by Target and High B. I mean, there are still left turns and right turns, and that's applicable even today as we have those permanent turn restrictions at Nesbitt and KPEC that people can use that intersection. That's one of the main reasons why we built that uh, Fitzrona Road extension through the quarry so people can have an alternate way to turn on to McKee Road. Perfect. Uh, yeah, think, like I said, things have been uh, just moving along uh, real slick this year, and I uh, appreciate the updates. Uh, always a pleasure to, to uh, read those every Monday, and we're going to miss you, Steve. I'm already in my, uh, my uh, sad phase. Every time I'm doing it, there's a violin playing in my ear with some sad music, so <laughs> just, uh, just want to throw that out there. Uh, Steve, uh, for people who want to get in contact with you, I know with COVID, uh, things have been a uh, you know, a little bit different, haven't been able to have our uh, open houses as usual, but uh, you want to hear from the people. Of course, and there's still lots of ways to stay in contact with us, staying virtually connected through our website, Verona Road Project at wi.gov. Certainly email addresses, Verona Road at dot.wi.gov, uh, as well as phone numbers, those contact information is listed on the website. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, Certainly reach out to us if you have any questions. A lot of the photos uh, of what's going on with construction progress are available on Facebook and certainly can get your updates uh, by just clicking the sign up for updates tab either on Facebook or on the project website. All right, Steve. Uh, fantastic. Thank you so much for jumping on, taking the time. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll get out the word here on that uh, closure on Nesbitt again uh, coming up here. Uh, May 18th and 19th now. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, of course, check back in with Steve. Maybe when the uh, traffic shifts happen, we'll, we'll try to bring you back in. Sounds good. Thank you, Jeremy. All right. That's Steve Tyson, Wisconsin. DOT, we're certainly going to miss that guy. All right. We'll take a quick break. You are watching Talking Pittsburgh. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So follow guidance from authorities where you live and do your part. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household. But phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit any social gathering. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. You're there for them. We're here for you. Find free care guides at aarp.org slash caregiving. Hola, Julia. ¿Estás lista para tocar con nosotros? Yo tocaré mi clarinete. Y Emma tocará su tambor. Tambor ruidoso. Bueno, ya sabes qué hacer, Julia. Julia sabe. Dado el autismo de Julia, los sonidos pueden ser muy fuertes. Y hace música a su manera. A tocar. La detección temprana del autismo puede hacer una diferencia de por vida. Conoce más sobre la detección temprana en deteccióndeautismo.org. Our hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps. Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. It's time for your road construction update. The Fitchburg Road Construction Update is brought to you by this guy, Bill Balky, from the Fitchburg Engineering Public Works. And 
a friend if I don't make him too upset. Bill, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. How are you, Jeremy? Hey, I'm living the dream, my friend. Thank you so much for taking the time. Love the vest, by the way. Anytime yep, you get that just vest came on. in from some construction out there, and uh, <laughs> things are busy. I, I have to say they are. I drove through uh, Fish Hatchie Road uh, corridor there and uh, wanted to check out the driveway work that uh, we had talked about last week. And uh, they are uh, just cruising along uh, on Fish Hatchie Road, uh, especially, uh, especially between, uh, well, I guess past Greenway uh, up to Post uh, is looking, uh, it's looking uh, good. It's a, a lot of construction, though. Yeah, they're, uh, they're putting down the stone uh, through the main line through there. And uh, next week, they'll be starting doing some paving up uh, north of Greenway Cross there. So they'll be uh, getting that intersection ready for, for a traffic switch in the following week. And then um, yeah, we're just working from north to south. Uh, and then you'll be starting to see some construction the next couple of weeks uh, south of Post Road then. Bill, how can we uh, get Jeremy into the pulverizer uh, machine where they're uh, crushing that concrete? Uh, we can get you in to take some video. I'm not sure if you can run it or not, but uh, <laughs> no, no, that um, that that pulverizing stuff. Are they reusing that uh, for our project, or are we taking that away? No, they're, they're they are actually reusing it up on uh, Fish Hatchery Road. So all the concrete that's there is going to get recycled into Fish Hatchery Road, and it came out. You know, we got some cost savings there from that, and uh, we're recycling so. Yeah, that's uh, that's something I did see uh, yesterday, and uh, it's a pretty cool operation uh, if you're a nerd like this guy. But uh, you know, I digress. Uh, moving ahead here in the next uh, next two weeks uh, of construction on Fish Hatchery Road, uh, what can we expect? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to be working from north to south again. Uh, they'll be putting down the uh, uh, the the gravel or the stone in the curb and gutter is going to be following up with that. Uh, so over the next month, you'll start to see curb and gutter driveways and everything along that uh, that stretch of road as we complete the utilities through there. And Bill, are we uh, right on track at this point uh, where we're supposed to be as far as our timeline goes? Yeah, uh, we're, we're right on time. We haven't lost any weather days or delays due to utility relocations. So it seems like uh, we're still on track to switch traffic uh, beginning of July. And then uh, as far as traffic flow uh, through the area, it's uh, still uh, can be uh, tough at times. Uh, uh, we do have a posted uh, a detour for this project, correct? Yeah, our alternate route would be, you know, around the city essentially using the Beltline Highway 14 of Verona Road. So uh, that's, that's our main detour if you can avoid the area. Uh, we do still encourage, you know, if you, if you need to you know, travels through the area, expect some delays through there. We have seen uh, some some more delays this week uh, due to the reopening of some of the businesses. So, um, whereas I said last week, you know, expect another 10 to 15 minutes to get from Post Road to Greenway, you could probably, you know, make that 20 now. So it's, it's picking up. Yeah, definitely. I've been I've gotten through there in minutes, and then I've gotten through there, you know, at a little bit longer time. Other note that I would say, Bill, is I saw for the people that were going in and out of the businesses and the construction equipment moving through there, um, you got to be alert when you are uh, entering the businesses where the construction is currently happening, uh, because equipment still has to move between each one of the uh, driveways uh, as they go on. So, uh, uh, being alert for construction equipment top priority, correct? Yes, uh, while we do, you know, inform our contractors and the workers out there to be aware of traffic coming in and out of the area, we also ask the people using those businesses to, uh, you know, take an extra second or two to just make sure that there's not a big truck coming or there, people aren't walking through the area. So um, it's not a free shot in and out. Uh, please be aware of those big construction equipment and the workers in the area. Yeah, I saw it uh, just from the time that I was there. Uh, somebody blocking construction equipment to try to get across while they're waiting for a stoplight that wasn't changing. And it's like, it's, it's give and take up there. So uh, just be, uh, be aware of that equipment uh, moving in and out of that area. Let's switch over to McKee Road uh, project. Uh, as that moves along, uh, we were uh, expecting maybe a traffic pattern switch, uh, but we're seeing a delay on that. Yeah, we've uh, we've had some issues with some of the one of the utilities that need to relocate in that area, that it just can't fit in with the existing traffic patterns. So, uh, we're putting that shift off uh, 
to the main uh, construction probably for another two to three weeks. So um, you won't be seeing a major switch through there, but uh, we do have the one set up on Seminole Highway that moves the traffic over to the west side of the, the, the road. And that will be in place uh, for probably three to four weeks before we switch over to the, the main McKee Road uh, switch. Okay. And then as far as uh, any uh, con uh, or construction updates besides the utility work uh, going on in there, any other uh, items to report? Um, no, I can't think of anything right now off the top of my head. It's uh, where we're just kind of bouncing around and, and you know, trying to make uh, do with the, the construction that we can get done in the area. So it's, uh, it's been a challenge trying to, to get through it. Uh, just, just going through. <laughs> Bear with us as uh, we continue to move on with that one. <laughs> Finally, uh, jump it over to Fahey Glenn. Uh, tell me that they're going to be paving soon. It just looks like it's ready. Yeah, uh, we're looking at uh, weather weather pending maybe Thursday, Friday for paving this week. Uh, so uh, you might want to stop out there. I'll let you know, and you can take <laughs> some video of uh, the paving. Right now, they're out there with the graders and grading out the gravel and everything for the asphalt pavement. But it looks like it's getting ready to go pretty soon here. Fantastic. Well, looking forward to seeing that open up. And uh, thanks again for uh, taking us out there last week. We appreciate it. Sure. And appreciate your time as always, Bill. Um, uh, if people want to find out more information on any of these projects, where can they find it? Uh, go to FitchburgWI.gov and uh, under the Public Works Engineering Construction, we have updates uh, posted there. We also have the Notify Me. Uh, if you sign up for those, we send those out weekly to notify you when changes occur to those, those web pages. Yeah, that's a great service, Bill. Thank you so, so, so much. I know you got a lot on your plate right now and uh, we appreciate the time as always and look forward to checking in with you next week. All right, thanks, Jeremy. All right, that's Bill Balke uh, from our Public Works Department engineer. He's my favorite engineer, don't tell Tracy. All right, we'll take a quick break. You are watching Talking Pittsburgh. <laughs> so how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one fourth of one half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to out-fraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. I know. <laughs> See on page four that the projections need to be blood next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. I want to thank our construction fellows, Stephen, Bill, for helping us out, keeping us updated on what's happening in all of our projects here in the city of Fitchburg. A lot of road construction happening, but wait till that infrastructure is in place. It's going to be amazing. And we'll keep you updated both with the Rhone Road Construction Project update on Monday. And of course, here on Wednesday, we have Bill with our Fitchburg Road Construction update. Hopefully we can get out too and check out some of that paving at Fahey Glen. Uh, a little bit later this week. That is looks like a really cool project if you haven't seen it. So just saying, just saying. All right, uh, I've got some business to take care of, and it is this. Take it. Stay connected to Fact TV all day long. FitchwardWI.gov, Roku, uh, Apple TV, Facebook, YouTube, social uh, media is where it's at, folks. We keep you up to date a lot on Facebook. Don't forget cable TV as well. We're out there for you too. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow.